Thank you for watching another Rainbow Aviation video. I'm your host, Brian Carpenter, and today we're out in the shop with the CNC press brake experimenting with our latest idea, 3D printed press brake dies. Today we will share with you our methods and techniques that we've developed to successfully 3D print dies for our 20 ton CNC hydraulic press brake. But not only that, we're going to take a look at how we converted our cheapo Harbor Freight 3-in-1 press roll shear into a usable tool for building aircraft. Necessity is the mother of all invention. Although not a literal translation from Plato's Republic, He's the philosopher that's most often attributed with this quote. And I must say, it's still just as true today as it was in 380 BC. In my experience, there's no one that appreciates and understands this more than those of us that have small workshops. Even though we work with a limited budget, limited space, and limited material, the one thing that always seems to be limitless is imagination. Everything would be much easier if we just had the same budget as NASA. But it is because of these limitations that we're forced to stretch our imaginations. Today's video and idea was born out of one of those typical frustrations arising from the absence of a very simple tool. We were manufacturing bulkheads for the fuselage boom assembly on the EMG-6. Now the development of the EMG-6 project was always been on a very limited budget. Couple that with a design philosophy that continues to drive the cost of development and manufacturing down presents a challenge. The primary method by which we can reduce the cost on many of the components is by manufacturing as many of the same components as possible at the same time. After all, the majority of cost in any of the components is the machine setup cost. But with a project of this nature where we have very low sales volume, stocking large inventory is unsustainable. Every dollar that we put into inventory is a dollar taken away from the research and development end of the project. This being said, we still try on a regular basis to work in the principles of mass production. We have designed the fuselage boom on the EMG-6 to utilize the same material throughout its construction. We've also designed into the majority of the components, like the bulkheads for example, the dimensions that result in setting up the CNC price break for the least number of adjustments. The design of the individual bulkheads incorporates flanges that are offset from the sides to allow the upper and lower flanges to be bent first, and then the two sides can be bent without setting up an additional set of dies. There is literally only 20 thousandths clearance between the upper and lower flanges and the press brake die during the bending process. This design corresponds with the design of the fuselage sides, allowing the upper and lower flanges to fit snugly between the fuselage boom and the side flanges. Use this process on nearly all of the bulkheads within the fuselage subassembly. However, bulkhead number 11 is a little bit of a problem. Because of the narrow dimensions between the two fuselage sides at this location, there's no room left for an upper and lower flange between the fuselage side flanges. As a result, the flanges have to overlap the flanges on the boom side. This results in the final product with the flanges bent so close together that there's no room left for the conventional bending die. In the past, for prototyping and low volume production, we can simply use the finger brake and take the additional time necessary to lay out and bend the flanges using that tool. However, this is fairly labor intensive, and we could reduce the cost of the individual component if we could use a CNC backstop and bend the flanges in the same fashion that we bent all of the other bulkhead flanges. This is actually quite simple. All it requires is a bending die that will fit between the two sides of the flanges. This allows the flanges to bend up on the outside of the bending die. So the choice was to cut one of the longer bending dies, I really didn't want to do that, or purchase a die that would match identical to the existing height dimensions as well as the radius. And an internet search came up empty in that area. I thought, I only need to bend about 30 of these bulkheads. I, I've made them out of wood before and that worked fairly well. And then I thought, well, if wood would work, why not a 3D printed die? It's stronger than wood. Even if it didn't work, the cost of experimenting would be minimal. So in SolidWorks, we simply designed a male die to fit our exact specifications. 
We then extruded the profile to the width required to bend this specific flange. After we were done with that, we exported the SOLIDWORKS drawing into an STL file. That STL file could then be imported into the Zortrax slicing program. We then placed the part on the build platform so that the layers of plastic would have the strongest orientation possible during the bending process. We then selected the highest density available for the 3D printing, and we selected a material, Z Ultrat, which is one of the higher density plastics with great impact resistance and good tensile strength. The next step will be to take the file that we've created in the Zortrax slicing software and bring it out to the Zortrax M200 3D printer. You can see the very close infill pattern, which is nearly as good as printing in a solid format. The infill structure is a latticework of filament oriented at 45 degree angles. This provides for an incredibly strong and rigid structure. And because of this high density infill pattern, it takes quite a bit of time for these individual parts to print. Once the part is finished printing, we can remove it from the build platform using a putty knife and a small hammer. This is done very gently with a light tapping motion to avoid any shock on the build platform. The hammer that we're using is literally only a few ounces. The build platform will remove easily from the part and the final product is a high density plastic bending die ready to be put into service. We built several different types of dies for testing and for different applications. We can create dies of any width and of any design with any radius we desire. We can adjust the height of the dies to work in conjunction with our steel dies, making it possible to avoid adjustments in between different bends. You can see the results on this die where we've stopped the printing early to show the infill spacing pattern. On this end, we have the face that was attached to the build raft and the platform. And on the opposite side, we can see the close proximity of the plastic beads laid down at 45 degree angles that create the infill structure. And after testing more than a dozen different 3D printed dies, we consider this to be a real option for the manufacturing process. We use the dies in the same fashion as we would a steel die, and initially we thought that, well, maybe these dies will have a pretty short lifespan, but after all of our initial tests, we've been quite surprised. Many of the dies that we've manufactured have been up to a couple of hundred parts without any signs of wear whatsoever. One of the added benefits in comparison to the steel dies is the lack of marring that goes on with the aluminum parts that we're bending. One of our ideas was to use JB Weld to repair any of the nicks in the dies as time went on. However, we haven't had any need for this because the wear is virtually non-existent. I think the big key is that we have a die that's well within the structural limitations for the material that we're bending. Most of these parts in this video that we use on the EMG6 electric motor glider use primarily 40 thousandths thick 2024 T3 aluminum. The success that we've had with our 20 ton CNC press brake led us to experiment with another one of our shop tools that normally sits idle. We have a low cost Harbor Freight 3-in-1 press, roll, and shear. Although adequate for a lot of non-aviation shops, the lack of a radius die on the bending portion makes it virtually unusable for building aircraft. We modified the press brake portion by adding a piece of one quarter inch plate steel in place of the male dies. And then we went on to manufacture both a male die with a radius and a female die large enough to accommodate the radius die plus the thickness of aluminum that we're bending. And although we have a great selection of other sheet metal bending tools in our shop, we have now put this one back into service and use it on a fairly regular basis for simple bending tasks. We've also been creating 3D printed backstops that we can use when we have repetitive tasks. By adding a quarter 20 thread to the body of the female die, we can insert a bolt and then 3D print a stop that can be adjusted back and forth by rotating. We can consistently achieve tolerances within a couple thousandths of an inch, and it only takes a few minutes to adjust the backstops. If we have more than a few parts to bend, it's worth setting up a stop to help in creating consistency in the degree of the bend. Although we could get much more sophisticated than this, using a block of wood and pieces of aluminum as shims, we end up being able to get consistency in the bends that are nearly perfect. 
So, there you have it, 3D printed press brake dies. You know, we certainly enjoy sharing our experiments and ideas from the workshop, and we hope you enjoy them. Keep in mind that uh, we've got a lot of other great videos for you to check out, and we keep making more on a regular basis. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you during the next one.